heading north from Kings Park, my first wildflower destination is going to be Lisieux National Park. It's two and a half hours north of Perth on the Indian Ocean Highway. It's beautiful coastal scenery along the way and a highlight in itself. Make sure you stop and check out the stunning natural wonder that is WA's Pinnacles. These ancient limestone columns make a surreal landscape that's further enhanced when you get the opportunity to catch a sunset from them. The nearby township of Cervantes was once a sleepy fishing town. These days it's well set up as a brilliant coastal town, family getaway with great accommodation, beach combing, fishing and swimming opportunities. You cannot pass through Cervantes without stopping into the Lobster Shack. It's been newly renovated and expanded. It is absolutely sensational. And this lobster was swimming out there yesterday. Today, he served up with some chips for the lunch I will never forget and probably crave for years to come. This truly is WA on a plate. Covering almost 30,000 hectares, Lazio National Park is massive. Its coastal environment is rich in biodiversity, being home to almost 10% of the whole of this state's flora. The park itself was named in honour of the French explorer Charles Alexandre Lesueur, an artist who passed through here on the ship The Naturalist back in 1801, documenting the local flora. Even the unsealed roads here are in great condition, so getting around to the various walking trails and picnic spots is not an issue. And as you get out and explore the National Park, there are so many things to see and do, but you might want to take some time out to rest. A great spot to have a cup of tea or maybe lunch is Cockle Shell Gully. And whilst you're sitting around the picnic tables, look into the bush. The terrestrial orchids here are just exquisite. And there's a whole range of them, cowslips, donkeys, spider orchids. It just gets better and better the more you look into the bush. How beautiful are these? Whilst the orchid family is the most prolific family of plant species on Earth, our orchid species are totally unique, with many of them rare and endangered. So getting to see them growing in their natural environment is an absolute treat. This is also the only place that you'll find the black kangaroo paw growing in the wild. They're hard to find, but don't let that deter you. And September and October is when they're really at their peak. When it comes to Australian plants, the flower colours of yellow, orange and hues of blue tend to be quite common. But lime greens and black, they are completely unusual. And that made this plant so collectible. By name, it's distantly related to the kangaroo paw. It's not part of the main kangaroo paw family. In fact, this is the last species of the genus. And this place was its last foothold on the planet. That was until we started doing some breeding with them about 10 years ago. If you come across one of the park's flora conservation offices whilst you're exploring, get some tips on the best places for the flowers that you're looking for. They love sharing the park secrets. What a good job you've got. The best. Yeah. This is my office. <laughs> How good's that? Yeah. This is the time to get up here and experience the, the black kangaroo paw flower in the wild, right? Yeah, true. And not just the, the kangaroo paw. I mean, just in Lazur National Park, where we are at the moment, there's 900, 1,000 different species, and everything's just starting to come into flower over the last couple of weeks. So we're looking forward to a fantastic um, flower season in the next coming weeks. Yep, and one of the world's great biodiversity hotspots. And when you look at the number of species here, compared to, say, the UK, yeah, OK, so maybe a thousand species in Lazur. There's maybe roughly 1,500 in the UK. The flower highlights you'll discover right now in Lazur National Park include the beautiful coastal golden wattles. There's a number of species, but they really brighten the park up. Kangaroo paws can be found in amongst shrubs right through the park, and they originate in WA. And they always look their best in a natural environment. Hibertias or buttercups are just stunning. These can be older shrubs, they can get to quite an age and they just produce the most amazing display this time of the year. And if you're looking for something really rare, well two outstanding varieties that you must look out for are the very rare pink hakea, hakea neurophila, and petrophile brevifolia. It's a stunning compact shrub that's just gorgeous this time of the year. What a great start to our wildflower discovery trip and 
As we start to drive through this country, which is just beautiful, I'm really taking the fact that, well, there's been a bit of rain around and there's still water around and this extends the wildflower season on. And that's really good news because my next journey, well, my next destination is just north of Eniaba. Now, this a little place I've always wanted to pop into because they run wildflower tours. It's never been a better time, so let's check it out.